indulging in some major mezcal escapism. He was a bit older, maybe late 30s, early 40s. Um, not thick or thin or necessarily fit, but he had a nice face and an odd yet forward way about him. Just how I like him, cute and weird. <laughs> he was a poet according to the cocktail waitress that had introduced us, the Michelle Obama of verse. The, rever the revered and refined first lady of spoken word. I had mentioned I started writing what I wasn't sure was poetry, but that's what I was calling it, and we started talking. We drank, we laughed, and we drank, like I do, or I did much more before all the therapy. Drinking and joking, but not joking. At one point, the jokes turned into touch, hand on hand. My leg jammed under his as if to say, yes. He said that we should go back to my place and let's just lay down for five minutes and rest and let's just, let's just lay down and then we'll read some poetry. I thought he was a nut job, but man do I love nut jobs. <laughs> I was apprehensive about bringing a guy home after only knowing him a few hours, but he seemed respectful, so I took the risk in spite of my 3D liquor vision goggles. We went back to my place and we settled in, him on the couch, me on my bed, and I demanded a poem. He insisted on Googling it on my phone because, well, I don't know why. I mean, I do, because he can. I said, did you just Google your poem on my phone? Do you have, like, fans and stuff? He nodded, almost imperceivably. <coughs> your polished back is arched like St. Louis. You are caught and caught in the air, and I am unfurling the laces in your body. Oh, I get it. <laughs> this poem is sexy. <laughs> I cross my legs a little tighter in their seated position, and I lean forward to hear the rest. All I want is to hot lust you into dead sweat. <laughs> when he was finished, I ran into my kitchen, and I grabbed my zine out of the box, my zine divine that I had just released a few months earlier <coughs> meant everything to me. And I replanted myself back on my bed, and I read it to him. He received it like sacred gospel, head back on the rest, eyes closed, breathing deeply. He said it was guttural. When I was done, he moved over to the bed, and he sat next to me, and I pushed my forehead in the back top of his shoulder blade, as if to say, OK. I shed inhibitions like snake skin. I let him remove them from me like scales one at a time. We spoke in a language half human, half animal, primal and honest. At one point I grabbed his face and I said, your sexuality is beautiful. He said, so is yours. He left just before dawn. We didn't sleep together. <coughs> and he left after an odd exchange. Not cute odd, just odd. <laughs> Not exchanging information in spite of my best effort. What? After some internet follow-up, I realized I was receiving the infamous brush-off. Oh. I felt empty. I couldn't shake the sinking feeling. I'd only known this guy a few hours, but for some reason he severely affected me. I felt like my power was scooped out of my stomach with an ice cream scoop spattered on the floor, sopping wet with liquor and silence. I took to the internet. Instagram, YouTube, his fuck yeah Tumblr page. You know those Tumblr pages that are all about one particular thing, like Marilyn Monroe or Mickey Mouse, they just have like photos and videos of, of one particular thing. Yeah, he has one of those. And I found out that he was featured on a podcast about sexuality that I really love. And I listened to it. On it, he read a poem about a girl he had a one night stand with. After he read the poem, the host of the show asked him, did the girl ever hear it? Did she ever know it was about her? And what's it like to make poetry like that about somebody? I mean, isn't it weird? And he said, yeah, she had heard it, and she was cool about it. And yeah, it's weird to write poetry like that, because here he is writing a poem about flowers coming out of some girl's vagina, and maybe this was just like a normal night to her. Um, hello, are you kidding me? Here I am writing like poems and telling stories to strangers about some guy not even knowing if he ever gave that night a second thought and he had almost the exact same experience? 
It was too ironic for words. Or maybe just ironic enough. I went into the local bookstore not long after, and I saw his latest book on the bookshelf. I stared at it for like three minutes, wondering if it was stalkery to read the book of somebody you had an intimate night with, or just like fucking normal. I grabbed the book off the bookshelf, and I opened it to the page of the poem that he had read to me that night. I admired the words as if they were faces of old friends, equally wondering if we had met before. All I want is to hot lest you in a dead sweat, I read. And things felt a little more clear. He was never going to write about me the way that I wrote about him, writing poems about our sexuality as if we were monkeys in a zoo. <laughs> he was never going to tell stories about me in front of a room full of friends and strangers. I was never going to show up on his Tumblr page or in a podcast or in any of his books. Or will I? Ooh.